Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is. But we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Today's message is titled, Can You Not Discern the Signs of the Times? Jesus is Coming. You know, I know many of you are weary. I know many of you are discouraged. You have family members, friends, co-workers laughing at you because you're talking about the Lord's soon return. Even so-called brothers and sisters in Christ are telling you that you are too focused on the Lord's return and that you're, wa um, that you're watching for his return too much and that's not what we're supposed to be doing and that many of us are getting hyped up talking about the rapture. Well, I wanted to do a video on this topic and I want to go over what the Bible truly says on this topic to encourage many of you out there. First off, we have to remember that we're told that this is how it would be in the end. In fact, in the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 3 to 4, we read the following. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers, walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. And boy, that couldn't be true. You bring up the Lord's soon return and you talk about the signs of the times today. That's the first thing people are going to say. Oh, every generation has been saying Jesus is coming. Uh, that's foolish, you know. Um, all things are going to keep going as they've always gone. <clears throat> We're told this is exactly, what, exactly how it would be in the end. In the book of Jude, go to verse 17 to 18. It says this, But beloved, remember the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. But you bring up the Lord's soon return and tell people Jesus is coming, talk about the signs of the times, they're going to be saying every generation has been saying this. This isn't any different. Things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation, taking the words right out of the Bible. Now there is a difference between watching for the Lord's soon return and date setting. We're not supposed to set dates. We're not supposed to say Jesus is coming next Friday at 6.27 p.m. No, 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 no. We're not called to do that. However, the Bible does command us to be watchful. It's all over the Bible. And I'm not going to go every single part. I'm not going to go over every single part of Scripture that tells us to be watchful. But I'm going to go over some of them. We are commanded in the Bible to be watchful, to be vigilant, to be sober. To be like the sons of Issachar. You know, if you go to the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 12, verse 32, we read the following. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the head of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. The children of Issachar, the sons of Issachar, had understanding of the times. Why don't we have understanding of the times? You know, Jesus rebuked those around him at his first coming for not understanding the signs of the times, for not, um, for re for not recognizing him as the Messiah. You know, Jesus is like, here I am. I'm doing everything that the scripture said that I would do. And you still reject me. But you know, in the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 54 to 56, Jesus said the following. And he said also to the people, when you see a cloud rise out of the west, straight away you say, there cometh a shower, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, there will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? Again, he's rebuking those around them because they can, they can discern when good weather is coming, when bad weather is coming. But he's like, I'm here, guys. I'm healing the blind, I'm raising the dead, I'm cleansing the lepers, healing the lepers. I'm doing everything that the scripture said that I would so you could recognize this time of visitation. He rebuked them for not understanding his first coming, for not 
um, they reject him. And likewise, how can we not understand the signs of the times that he's about to come again? Likewise, we're told that we will see the day approaching. We're told to be watchful so that when that day comes, it will not catch us off guard. In fact, in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 to 9, the Apostle Paul says the following, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But look at what it says next. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. We are told very clearly that we will see the day approaching. That when the day comes, it will not catch us off guard. Because we're being watchful, we're being vigilant, we're being sober. Like the sons of Isaac, Issachar, excuse me, we have understanding of the times. Titus chapter 2 verse 13 the Apostle Paul says, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of, our, of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're looking for our blessed hope. We're watching, just like the Bible commands us to do. In fact, we're told after the rapture of the church at the judgment seat of Christ at the Bema, right, for watching for his return, for loving his appearing, we're going to get a crown. In 2 Timothy 4.8, the Apostle Paul says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. For those of us watching, we're longing for his appearing, we're going to get to lay a crown down at the feet of Jesus Christ for loving his appearing. If that doesn't encourage you, I don't know what will. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, we read the following, But the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Folks, it's all over the Bible. We're not to date set and saying he's coming this day, next Friday at 627 p.m. No, 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 we don't do that, right? But we're told to be watchful. We're told to be vigilant. We're told we will see the day approaching and it will not catch us off guard. Can you not connect the dots right now? Just look around you. Can you not see the convergence? Israel's back in the land. Isaiah and Ezekiel prophesied that Israel would come back into the land, be reborn as a nation, and that it would happen in one day. Isaiah 66, 8 says that it would be born in a day. And that happened May 14th, 1948. Ever since then, with the increase in technology, the increase in people calling evil good and uh, good evil, and just look at the lawlessness, the explosion of lawlessness right now all over the world. You watch God's prophetic timepiece, the nation of Israel, Jerusalem, is a tinderbox right now. The Middle East is on the verge of an all-out war. We're seeing the stage continuing to get set up for the coming third temple. I mean, folks, if you can't connect the dots right now and read your Bible, I don't know what else to tell you. We need to be like the sons of Issachar that had understanding of the times. Just look around you. We don't know exactly when Jesus is coming, and I'm never going to set a date on this channel. But boy, we're going to be watching, we're going to be longing, we're going to be waiting for that blessed hope because it is coming fast like a full-speed train. And on this channel, I am not afraid to say that Jesus is coming soon. Again, you will never hear a date come out of my mouth. In fact, I'm not going to sit here and say a year. I'm not going to do that. But I look at the convergence in 2021, I look at every, connect the dots, I look at everything going on, and I'm saying, wow, what a year to be watching. And if it's not this year, we keep watching. We're never going to set a date. But my goodness, if you're someone telling people they shouldn't be watching for the Lord's return, you need to go back and read your Bible because it's all over the Bible. You need to be like a son of Issachar. And if you can't connect the dots and the convergence right now and you're telling others not to watch, something's very wrong because Jesus is coming. Just connect the dots. Look around you. And if you're someone watching this video right now, 
and you're looking around the world and you're saying, what in the world is happening? The, the reality is, this ship is sinking and you need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you, you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Right? But this is what you have to understand. Right? You have to understand that God loves you so much that he would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us, and he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his, precious, shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary, paying the price that you could never pay with on your own so that you could be forgiven of your sins and be with them forever in heaven? The gospel of your salvation is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. It's believing. It's putting your faith in your trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ for you on that cross at Calvary. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, paying your sin debt in full with his blood that you could never pay on your own so you could be forgiven of your sins and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose from the dead. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. Again, it's believing in putting your faith in your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, believing he paid it all for you on the cross at Calvary by shedding his blood. And in his death, burial, and resurrection. The bottom line is this. Hell's a re heaven and hell are very real, real literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's horrific. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die in your sin, reject, rejecting Jesus, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that can save you. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts 4, 12, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The Virgin Mary is not going to save you. Buddha is not going to save you. Allah is not going to save you. Muhammad is not going to save you. Your own works are not going to save you. Father McMuffin is not going to save you. The New Age movement is not going to save you. Your own, uh, and your own works aren't going to save you. There is only one way to the kingdom of heaven and one name that can save you. And that is the name of Jesus Christ and him alone. And I'm imploring you to get saved right now. Because tomorrow's not promised. We can all breathe our last breath at any time. And I want you to go to heaven. But Jesus is the only way there. He loves you. And he demonstrates his love for you for what he did for you on that cross at Calvary. Romans 5.8 But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Settle the issue right now. Get saved. And again, it comes down to putting your faith and your trust in his blood, in his death, burial, and resurrection. The gospel of your salvation, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Get saved today because tomorrow's not promised and Jesus is coming. Tomorrow may be too late. Don't put this off. I hope this has encouraged you guys out there that are weary, that are tired, that have others laughing at you, mocking you, and even other so-called brothers and sisters in Christ that are telling you watching for the Lord's return is wrong. Don't listen to it. I pray that the scriptures I went over with you just now, just pick up your Bible and read them. That we are commanded to be watchful. We're commanded to be vigilant. We're commanded to be sober. We're told we will see the day approaching. And like the sons of Issachar that had an understanding of the times, that day will not catch us off guard when the day comes. Keep watching with me. Keep looking up. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, he's coming. And he's coming quickly. One day soon, sooner than many of you even realize. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.